Our next guest is a New York state legislator who has sponsored two child online safety bills, but he is running into opposition from one of the most well-funded industries out there. Joining us right now to talk about his battle against big tech is New York State Senator Andrew Gennardis. The Safe for Kids Act that he sponsored aims to curb addictive features of social media, while the new child, uh, New York Child Data Protection Act looks to restrict sites from collecting and selling kids' information. And uh, Senator, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Betsy. Good morning. So let's talk a little bit about what is happening here and um, what these two bills that you've proposed would actually do. Yeah, so uh, the two bills that we're proposing that we're actively negotiating right now would really uh, aim to protect kids' well-being and their mental health on social media, as well as their personal data. The Safe for Kids Act would limit the ability of social media apps to use uh, addictive algorithms or predictive algorithms uh, in curating content to show kids uh, that they are not signing up to see that is actually addicting them to stay on their phones longer and longer and longer, which is leading to significant mental health issues, uh, the rates of uh, depression, anxiety, hospital admissions for self-harm, suicidal ideations. You pick the, you know, the age demographic amongst teenagers and young kids, uh, the rates of these incidences are either doubling, tripling, or quadrupling in some instances. Uh, and it's a real problem. And it's not just Andrew Gennard is saying that. This is the U.S. Surgeon General, the chief public health officer in the country, saying that social media last year in an advisory is not sufficiently safe for kids. So we want to restrict the ability of these algorithms to uh, prey on the insecurities and vulnerabilities of young users as a default. And then the parallel bill, the Child Data Privacy um, the Protection Act, would limit internet companies' ability to collect personal data from children just to monetize it and to sell them more ads. And the reason these two go hand in hand is because the addictive algorithms serve to keep kids' eyes glued on the screens longer so that the internet companies can make more ad revenue off of, the, off of these children. Uh, and in 2022, the most recent year we have a data for, uh, big tech companies made $11 billion just in ad sales to kids. Now, I'm of the view, I have two young kids myself, that kids' personal privacy and kids' data and their mental health should not be for sale. Right. Um, let me ask you this, and I, I agree with you in many respects in that I have kids and uh, we all, and I, even myself, I feel addicted in so many ways. Um, however, as I'm reading through uh, some of the proposals around these algorithms that you're trying to block, it, it raises a different question for me, which is that, you know, some of these algorithms, while they're not working as well as we'd like them to, and maybe they're working against us in certain cases, they also do filter out hate and they do filter out harassment to some extent. They don't do it as much as we'd like, clearly. But depending on how this bill is written, it seems to me that you could actually be preventing some of that from even happening at all. Yeah, so that's actually something we've heard a lot from the, the tech companies because they don't want us to touch algorithms whatsoever. The reality is the algorithm functions at its core like a formula, and it takes a bunch of inputs and then it produces an output. These companies are well able to, to set up this formula to screen for hate content, for bad content, while still giving children the ability to find whatever content they want on their own without having to feed them content they don't sign up to see at all. These algorithms really function like heat-seeking missiles. They are designed intentionally, uh, and this is based on their own documents from you know, litigation going on right now against Meta, for example, that when they design these algorithms, they've actually studied uh, slot machines in casinos and the psychological effects of slot machines and the addictive nature of just one more pull, just one more pull, one more coin, oh, I'm not one more video. I think there's a